Tonight on the Kiwi Football Fix. The football ferns have 99 problems on the pitch and as many days to fix them. Phoenix crash, burn, explode inside Melbourne's Lamy Park. Kiwis flying and scoring around the world. And stay tuned for a special presentation to our favourite piece of cutlery. Yes, yeah, so much to look forward to on uh, match day 27 of the Kiwi Football Fix. And don't forget, we've got Chloe Knott, skipper from the Wellington Phoenix, coming in off the bench as well. But yeah, time to introduce you to the panel. We've got Kirsty Yallop, who I don't even know if you found sleep today. You've commentated the game earlier this morning. You watched your wife play against England. And here you are on the Kiwi Football Fix. Kirsty, great to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me. You know, I haven't had too much sleep, maybe a couple of hours, obviously watching the Ferns games and doing the commentary for that. And then the Matildas played as well. And yeah, it's been a bit of a morning. Meek's unfortunately picked up an injury. So mm. I've been dealing with a lot of phone calls, seeing how she is as well. And yeah, it's been a bit of a morning. <laughs> Hopefully it's just a little niggle for, for Tamika. And everybody's favorite uh, piece of cutlery. The Spoon, Jacob Spoonley. How are you, mate? Bit anxious. Uh, the voiceover, not sure what the surprise is going to be, mate. Santa Claus is coming to town, yeah. let's just say that. He was. Uh, he didn't get around all the chimneys uh, back in December. History doesn't doesn't indicate it's going to be good for me, mate. That's, that's all I'm concerned about, yeah. What are you wearing? <laughs> well, I'm kind of on brand. So this is San Diego. They wear teal. The Ferns have put teal into their new kits as well, so I thought I'd bring this along. Might be going to James McConey after the show because it is a Kyle Adams special. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. All right. Sounds good. And Kirsty, this yep. is looking good, isn't it? The uh, the new Ferns kit. It's pretty nice, isn't it? Yeah. Got the new threads on. Thanks to Spoons, he brought it for me to borrow today. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty good in it. Just yeah. steal it. Just take it. Spoon yeah, it fits well pretty good. I think it fits me better than you. What do you reckon? I have not tried it on. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, good question. Where's the guys' kit? Because I want to buy one for myself to wear along to the games and, and to support the team. And I haven't seen guys' sizes out there yet. G. I had a look on the uh, the Nike website, and I do believe that particular shirt has a, a men's size or fit. So yeah, uh, I think just head to the the Queen uh, Queen Street store. I think. Uh, for Nike and you'd be able to pick up a men's fit Perfect. like that. Yeah. All right, what we usually do at this time is our onside offside. I don't know if I'm onside or offside. This is what I say week after week, but Constantine Hatsidakis and Andy Robertson have a little bit of a set to Liverpool versus Arsenal. I mean, Robertson, he's copped one in the face. I don't think he made enough of the contact. He should have gone down, <laughs> should have rolled around, maybe get a, a penalty or something at the start of the second half. But in all seriousness, Spoon, this is, this is ridiculous. It's getting to the point where something has to be done about players approaching officials. It comes off the back of some average calls in the first half, but that is no excuse for Andy Robinson to get in the linesman's face. Ah. And he cannot react like that. If we don't expect our players, or we don't allow our players to react like that, then the, the linesman is going to face some consequences. I don't think they should be necessarily that severe, but definitely has to um, face some repercussions for it. The luckiest man out of all of this, Bruno Fernandes after he uh, threw, pushed the linesman in the... Um, launched him. Launched him in the Liverpool Man United game. No suspension, so um, I think he's got to be very, very fortunate. Mm. I mean, this doesn't happen if the player doesn't approach the official. We don't see this a lot in the women's game, Kirsty. Is it just because men are angry in general? <laughs> I don't know about that. Obviously, it yeah, happens more in the men's game. I don't think they're more angry in general. Maybe a little bit. You're talking to one of the feistiest <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit tough in my time. Well, but as feisty as you were, you're not doing that sort of thing at half-time, are you? No, I'm not really getting in their face. Probably yelling at the ref a bit too much and, and saying a few too many words. But, yeah, nothing physical and, and nothing up in their grill. I don't think, yeah, that's really very good at all. And, and still, though, from the linesman, they shouldn't, shouldn't be throwing the elbow out like there that. either. Mm, no, yeah. exactly. So. I thought it was just like a natural reaction. Action. Someone grabs the elbow and it just sort of flies up into the face. Yeah. Just a nice. Maybe that's just me. Spoon, onside, offside. Lamy Park. I think you um, surmised it perfectly. Over the last week, there were six matches at Amy Park with the Wellington Phoenix at the very end. So if we go through those, we've got the Derby, so victory against City. On Thursday, there was the Storm versus the Roosters. On Friday, Western United hosted the Mariners. Saturday, Super Rugby, the Rebel played the Blues. Sunday, victory against Perth. And then Monday, we get to the Knicks against City. Before the Phoenix stepped down onto the field, there was 400 minutes of football that mm. were played on that field. Far too much, and it definitely contributed towards at least the red card, if not the way the, the players played the game. So that is inexcusable 
for mine. And the Knicks have been done dirty a few times this A-League season. Uh, cast your mind back to Palmerston North and it looked like they'd done burnouts on the field before kickoff. Um, go to Wollongong against Western Sydney Wanderers and that was atrocious. Uh, third time. Kirsty, it's just not good enough. It's a, it's a terrible look for the A-League as well when this keeps happening. You turn up and you're, you're playing on substandard pitches. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not a good look. And as a player, when you show up, you know, the first thing you're looking at is the pitch and you want to see a nice, pristine field, you know, nice and green and, and not bobbly at all. So when you're showing up and you're playing on something like that, yeah, there's nothing more disappointing than that. It contrasts the MLS. So I saw Boxy and um, Bill playing on purpose-built, and per, playing in purpose-built stadiums on fields that did not have the level of intensity that we saw at Amy Park over the weekend. Mm. I think that's where the A-League needs to move towards. Not necessarily a 30,000-seater, but purpose-built stadiums, maybe 10 to 15,000 seats. I want to pick up on something you said. The pitch contributed to Josh Law's red card. I'd say Costa Barbarousas contributed to Josh Law's red card, because if he scores 13 seconds earlier, then we're not getting that naboot in the face, are we? There we go. That, that, yeah. That's brilliant. But yeah, um, you're right, uh, wasted opportunity is going to touch on that in a bit. But yeah. if you watch the red card again, Josh Laws goes to play the ball and you can see he slips and he ends up kicking, nabooting uh, Naboo in the face yeah. and uh, definitely contributes towards the sending off. All right, Kirsty, onside, offside for you this week. Uh, onside, offside for me is, you know, all the injury woes that the Ferns have had. There's, they've been struggling with a lot of injuries to key players and, and, you know, it's been really tough for them. But two positive things coming back is, is Stoddy and Jackie Hand. Mm. And they've both been back in the squad and in the starting 11 as well. And I think, you know, in the games, Iceland and Nigeria, they were really positive and two of the better players for the Ferns and, and showed what it is they bring to the team. And their return is that much more significant considering the new injury clouds that we've got hanging yeah. over the team. Um, and unfortunately, as we're going to touch on, I'm not sure we've got the depth. So we need to have our best players playing and seeing Jackie Hand and Rebecca Stock returning. And then Michaela Foster getting her starting debut over the last week was great. Yeah, this morning the two-match tour in Turkey, it wrapped up for the Ford Football Ferns, playing against Iceland and Nigeria. If you missed it, here's the best of the action. Some good pace being shown here by Svendis Jane here. Dangerous ball, look at the space there. Oh boy, that should have been 1-0 to Iceland. It should have been 1-0, all right. She'll be so disappointed with that. Skied it over the crossbar. That's, I mean, that was good play there from Iceland. Dangerous, it's in. Iceland take the lead. Wow, what a throw in that was. That was a, an amazing throw and it was huge. It was all the way into the box. Oh, here's a chance. It's gone in. New Zealand yeah. has scored. There's Wilkinson at the far post with a header. What a finish. Well, it was a perfectly delivered corner from Michaela Foster. And here comes Lynn, the substitute. He's just come onto the field. And Essen is down again for the second time in as many minutes. Quite link up with their Phoenix teammate. Good win there for Steinmetz. And uh, not far away from Jackie Han. Uh, that, was, that was a good strike from Jackie Han. Not just a little bit too much. Final score here is New Zealand 1, Iceland 1. Oh, good little play here. And there's a shot, Essen. Wow, well, it was an excellent play there from Ajabati. He got her onto her left foot and unleashed a cracker. Tony Payne to take the corner. Got clear and it's in, it's in! Fantastic hitter and Nigeria take the lead. Essen just couldn't quite get there. And the goal is scored by Anobi Ebi, the captain. Alozzi again, really coming into the game nicely now. Again creating space for the cross. Big chance, it's a second goal. And Nigeria at half time, they were 1 0 ahead, now they're 2 0 ahead. Terrific strike there by Jennifer Echagini. And the Nigerians celebrate. Oh, it's a wobbly back pass. And Wilkinson just couldn't get it under the keeper. Oh, my gosh. Oh, there was the flag. There was no flag. Here's Nigeria. And Essen saves brilliantly again. And that's good work from Bowen. It's still here for Nigeria. And it's a third goal. That is that in this match. Big power move by number nine, Desiree Operanoisia. And she eases Nigeria clear, 3-0. All right, so a 1-1 draw with Iceland, which I think we can all agree was really positive. But then 
the 3 0 defeat to Nigeria today. Kirsty, did we get what we wanted out of this two match series in Turkey? Yeah, I mean, you know, there was the positive signs with the, the game and the result against Iceland. So I think that was a, a good step for the Ferns. They finally scored a goal again after, you know, a big goalless drought and, and got the, the result with the draw. So that was, was positive signs going into the Nigeria game. And then, you know, obviously a 3 0 loss is, is really pretty bad and pretty poor for the football ferns against a side that they should have been beating and a side that they need to be beating if they want to, you know, make it out of the group stages at the World Cup. Against Iceland, it was refreshing. There was a dynamic play, there was confidence, the team looked resilient um, and they definitely brought a lot more energy. So there was that positivity, that infusement of positivity that we're expecting. Against Nigeria, we saw a continuation of a pattern that is really worrying. So we've only scored one goal in the last seven games. That is nowhere near the standard for international football. And unfortunately, over that period, we've now lost to three tier two teams in Portugal, Argentina and Nigeria. So heading into the last 100 days before the World Cup, although it is still fixable to a large extent, it's worrying at the moment. We're not tracking in the right direction. What part did Livy Chance's injury play, especially in today's game against Nigeria, not having her out there on the left-hand side and, and combining with Mickey Foster? Yeah, we didn't see a lot of play come down the left-hand side in the game against Nigeria, so, you know, it was a big loss for the football ferns. We saw a lot of attack going down the right, which was, was positive, but, you know, without Livy out there, there's, we lose that creativity that the ferns have. She's the most creative player for the football ferns, so going forwards, you know, there, there wasn't as much quality getting into the box or, or players getting in goal, chan goal chance positions and things like that. This is, this is, this is a big issue. Um, we've got a number of our key midfielders out and I don't want to use the alphabet injury here because I don't want to jinx it. We, we hope that... Say like, it, mate. Just no, just we're, no, no, absolutely straight, not. We're not speaking this into existence. We <laughs> need Livy Chance at the World oh, Cup. Oh, of course we do. But, I mean, we, we've seen it previously. Annalie Longo, yes. Rhea Percival. Have we got another on our hands with Livy Chance? The longer this continues, the more worried I get. Yeah. Because typically the medical team will want to come out and allay fears and say, no, it's OK, you know, she's going to be out for X amount of weeks, but we're not hearing anything at the moment. Mm. So the New Zealand football public can rightly be concerned. And the reason that they can be concerned is that Olivia Chance is our most creative player at the moment. Mm. And we saw that when she went off against Iceland, we became blunted and we became limited. And that was really apparent against Nigeria where we had a very dynamic physical team but we had no ability to unlock a deep Nigerian defence. Yeah, Kirsty, there was some really good stuff down that left hand side as you, you spoke about earlier in that first half against Iceland and it was Livy Chance but it was also Mickey Foster and, and her <laughs> learning curve, it's like oh, that at the moment isn't it? A <laughs> yeah. professional footballer with the Phoenix <laughs> and now she's a starter for the football ferns. Let's talk about the qualities that, that Foster possesses, the, the dead ball situations corners, free kicks and also crossing into the box. What do you like about that? Yeah, I really like what I've seen from Foster. I think she's brought a lot to the Fern side and, and really shown, you know, what it is she can bring with, you know, her quality set piece delivery, the corners, the free kicks, uh, even the long throw in is, is you know, is also yeah. a good thing. Um, she likes to get forward. She's very positive with her play. So I like what she brings to the attack for the football Ferns and especially around those set pieces. I think that's something that's been missing from the Ferns game in the last couple of years, you know, and it's it's a great opportunity to score goals and get easy goals from situations like that. You know, on the flip side of that, I do think there's still a little bit of work to be done in defence, you know, especially when she's coming up against some quality players that she will be playing at the World Cup. What are, what are you seeing in those 1v1 situations where she can make some adjustments that will really improve her game? Yeah, I think it's it's you know, things that you learn through experience and through playing against those players, just better positioning and, and better body positioning as well and just a bit more aware of, of the player she's coming up against so she knows what to expect. You know, maybe she got rolled a little bit too easy a couple of times and, and caught a bit flat-footed on the odd occasion and, and got beat by some quality players from Iceland and Nigeria. Spoon, I can't help but feel like this... This match against Nigeria this morning was like a missed opportunity, though, because we only saw Millie Clegg for... Six minutes, I think it was. Yeah, there was five minutes time added on, so maybe she played 11. But when you, you concede the second goal in the 48-minute mark, surely there's an opportunity to bring in the likes of Millie Clegg. India Page Riley, uh, is she injured? I don't know. But did Yitka Klimkova just miss a trick this morning against Nigeria? I would have really have liked to see Millie Clegg come on, particularly when Paige Satchel was introduced. Give her some time, see what she can do. And she definitely brought that direct play that she's produced at club level. Um, did it 
come up with um, any outputs? No, but she needs time. She's 17 years old. The other point is, I, I don't know why India Page Riley didn't start this morning when Gabby Rennie did. Um, India Page Riley is probably the most creative player alongside Jackie Hand, and with Liv Chance out, it's almost like a like-for-like -like swap, but we went for a more physical, dynamic player. And having seen her play against Argentina in that second half where we were trying to get the equaliser, she was really impressive, and I would have loved to have seen her get more game time this morning. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen Indy get on the field as well. You know, I think she's an exciting player for the Ferns that we haven't really seen much of. And, you know, it's a shame because she does bring a lot to the attack and she is more creative. And, and those seem to be the players that we're missing in the Football Ferns squad at the moment. So players like that, you know, we need on the pitch. And especially if we want to be trying to create goals and score goals. And, mm. and I think, you know, touching on Millie Clegg as well, I think it would have been more beneficial to see more minutes from her, you know. She got 10 minutes against Iceland, and so you're thinking, oh, she might get more of a go against Nigeria, and then she only comes on, you know, like you said, for five minutes plus the five minutes extra time. So a bit of a missed opportunity there. You saw her come in, and she she actually did get in on goal for an opportunity. She's played the ball across across the box, squared it, where she probably had a bit more time. She could have taken a touch and had a, had a strike herself. Well, you know what, Kirsty, in the Phoenix, she would have taken a shot. So yeah. do you think this is maybe a, a directive from the coaching staff, like to find the final pass, even though the final pass <laughs> may have already been played? <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. It's a tough one. I do think, you know, watching the Football Ferns play, it does seem like they're lacking the decision-making skills out there across you know, the whole 90 minutes in certain confidence? situations. Because yeah. Because you get in front of goal and you're like, we haven't scored in a long time, we've got to make this perfect. Is it that sort of a situation? Yeah, it could be. And also for Clegg, you know, she hasn't had many minutes, so she's that's probably the first time she's found herself in that, you know, position mm. for the football ferns, you know, and, and that's a lot of pressure on a player. So if she's, she's not finding herself in those positions enough, she's not getting that experience and, and not able to convert them. Um, so, yeah, she definitely needs more minutes. But I think, yeah, I think the girls do need to show a bit more confidence and a bit more ownership over the team's performance rather than maybe listening and doing what they've been told the whole time and, and just reading the game a bit better. We'll talk more about the Ford Football Ferns in a moment here on the Kiwi Football Fix, but yesterday represented 100 days until the FIFA Women's World Cup. So we sent Christina Eddy along to Eden Park to get a, a sneak peek of the Unity Beat. with what will be the anthem of this World Cup, the Unity Beat. Now it's crazy to think that the Football Ferns will kick off the World Cup right here at this stadium against Norway in just a few months. So with one of the biggest events coming to New Zealand shores, are we actually ready for it? We are right on track for the kickoff in 100 days. The upgrades at our training sites are almost complete. More than 2,000 volunteers have been recruited. All 32 teams have qualified and images of those 31 days of the tournament will be broadcast to around 2 billion people across the globe. You know what, I was standing out there in the middle before and then listening to this Unity Beat. Can it start tomorrow? It just is, it's just getting exciting and I can't believe it's, it's 100 days to go. I don't think New Zealanders have quite woken up to how big this tournament's going to be. This event will be bigger than the Rugby World Cup, which a lot of people probably don't know. Uh, so are we ready for it? We're ready. The number of fans uh, that we're expecting on shore will be equally as many that come here for a Lions tour or a, a Men's Rugby World Cup. I know flights um, from the USA are already booked out. It is huge and there are so many people coming down and uh, yeah, I don't think New Zealand understand exactly what's about to hit their shores. The hospitality industry will feel it. They're in the hotels, they're coming through the airports, they're in the restaurants, so I think that everyone will know that it's on and we'll all feel a sense of how huge it's been. For New Zealand football and for the Ferns, it's important that they do well. They've got a goal to get out of their group, so that's what we need to focus on. Always the home nation has that pressure to do well. I remember France talking about the pressure that they had to, to, to perform well in France as well. So it's always there, but it's not a necessity. It's such a global sport. As an ex-fern, we've, we've paved the way, and I feel like I'm a big part of this anyway. And when I see the girls standing on this pitch on the 20th of July, lined up listening to the, to the national anthem, I'll be there. I'm in their hearts with them because we, you know, we've done a lot to get it 
to hear as players and it'll be loud, it'll be amazing and, and at the end they'll just look up and be like, well, I'm at home. Yeah, the unity beat, we'll hear that for the first time at Eden Park, football ferns against Norway. Uh, yeah, 99 days away from now. Look, I, I've got to be honest about something. Usually I'm really good with my favourite teams, be it football, rugby league, rugby. I can watch the game. If I get a disappointing result, I just go, pff, park it, and then I do the dishes or I go for a walk or whatever. But today's performance against Nigeria really got it under my skin. And I, I'm just really still stewing over it. And it's got me thinking, Kirsty and Jacob, like what can we actually do to sort out this fern side so they don't embarrass themselves on the world's greatest stage in 99 days from now. And yeah, I, I understand that the cavalry in a sense is coming. We haven't seen CJ Bott. We don't know about Annalie Longo. Rhea Percival is back training. And look, if those three return, that is fantastic. That's definitely gonna help this fern side. But I think they need more than that. And so it got me thinking, what needs to happen is Yeka Klinkova she doesn't need to come back to Auckland, New Zealand after those two games in Turkey. She needs to board a plane to America and track down Abby Ursig and do whatever it takes to get her in this team. I don't know if it's a personality thing. I don't know if she's past it. She, of course she's not past it. She's still playing for Louisville and scoring goals for them against Washington Spirit, for goodness sake. Get her in the team, no matter what. Like, grovel, beg. Get her in there because her quality is so much better than what they've got at the moment, they desperately need it. And that would be the first thing I'd do if I was Yitka Klinkova. The second, and maybe it's not as important, but then I'd go to Australia, and I know that, yep, she's in the middle of an A-League uh, final season, but you get Anna Green back on board. And you all of a sudden you've got quality, experience. Anna Green might not make our first 11, but she's so much better than what we've got on the bench at the moment, trying to make an impact in that defensive line. Am I, am I talking gibberish? Do we need Abby Ursig to get back on side, Kirsty? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really good shout. Abby is clearly one of the best players the Football Ferns has ever had. And, you know, it's really disappointing to not see her in the squad. And it's a massive loss for the girls and for the team it's and for New Zealand. It's a Home World Cup as well. Yeah, Kirstie, exactly. It's a Home World Cup. So, I, you know, as a player, you, you know, you always want to play in a Home World Cup. I understand Abby has her reasons for, for not wanting to be involved with the football ferns and, you know, and that, that is what it is. But like you said, like New Zealand football and, and Yitka should be doing everything they can to try and get her back because she could be the difference in the football ferns making it out of the group stages at the mm. World Cup or not. And, you know, you have seen other, other coaches around the world do that. We were just talking before about Julie Ertz, who's just returned to the American national team, and she's one of their key players in the midfield that they've really been missing. Mm. Um, the grit that she brings and, the you know, she wins, wins back a lot of ball for them and keeps the possession for them, and she's a huge player for them, and they've been missing her, and their coach has, you know, gone on a plane and f flown into her and knocked on her door and, and has managed to get her back, and we saw her making her first appearance since she had her little one um, the other night in, in the game against Ireland. All of a sudden, it, it fully weaponises Mickey Foster as well, because we know how good she is from the, the corners. And we saw Hannah Wilkinson score against Iceland, but Abby Ursig at set piece is dominant, you know, and she scored the other week for, for Louisville against Washington, and it was from a set piece. It was from a corner. She just got up there and won the header and they're, they're back into it. They, they draw that game 2-2. Is that not what you want? You, you want your best players and getting the best out of others as well, Jacob. Best players at a Home World Cup. And look, just for context, you're a Liverpool and Warriors fan, so you take I'm punishment. an Eels supporter, mate. Oh Warriors are close second. Close second. So you take punishment. So for you to react like this, I, I think it speaks to the patience that we've shown with this team. You're right, there is an attacking threat that Ursig does bring, particularly with Foster's delivery. But for me, it's about the resilience. It's about the leadership that's shown. So we're gonna be put under the pump at this World Cup. We're up against some really good opposition who have some strong attacking threats. There are gonna be five to 10 minute periods where we're gonna to have to hunker down, batten down the hatches and say, we're surviving this and you're not going to score. We haven't seen that resilience from this team at times or actually fairly regularly uh, in the last couple of games. Abby Ursig knows how to win. She knows how to repel. She knows how to create resilience and have that emanate outwards. So for me, I think you're bang on. Ask the question, look, we're 100 days out. We can still bend this, uh, mend this bridge. If not, 
then you can tell us no, but we're still gonna ask the question. Yeah. And you're right, with Anna Green, just quickly, if we don't have Betsy Hassett, or she's not gonna be available, because that injury looked pretty severe, I've gotta be honest, like I've broken ribs before, and that looked really similar. Um, at the moment, live chance, massive injury cloud, Rhea Percival, anything could happen between now and then, which could affect her ability to participate. Um, Annalie Longo, probably not gonna be involved in significant ways. Greeny brings you experience, provides you direction, and boy, did she give us bite against the US women's team. That was, that was, she uh, epitomized what it was to try and keep um, the tide basically, which was yeah. coming in at bay at times. Spot on. So with all that having been said, we've come up with a, a dream 11, if you like, for the Kiwi football fix. It looks a lot like this because it is this. And we've got Abby Ersig in the heart of defence alongside Rebecca Stott. I'm really interested in your thoughts, Kirsty. What do we do with Rebecca Stott? Because she's, she's got more than one string to her bow. She can play in the heart of defence, but she's also so comfortable on the ball in midfield. What do, you, what do we do with Stotty? Yeah, you know, I think Stotty, she's a key player for the football fans, and, and if she is playing alongside Abby, that, that's a great combination in their centre-back pairings. Um, I do like that, you know, she has that flexibility and you can put her in midfield as well. I like her best at centre-back because I think she is so good there and she reads the game well and she steps in well on the strikers and, and wins a lot of ball back. But, you know, depending on the personnel that's available and if, if the Ferns had all of their players available and everybody back from injury, I think, you know, you could see her in that midfield as well and, and maybe even a formation change. Rado Vidicic did play her in midfield for Melbourne City last year. I think in terms of her rehab, following her cancer treatment, I'm not sure if she's got the engine to play in midfield. I think she'd prefer to play at centre-back. And if she does play there, it gives us another ball playing option at the back. Also, if you look at that, Stott alongside Ersig, that's a pretty formidable combination. Solid, isn't it? Yeah. And what about CJ Bott higher up the field? We know how she likes to maraud forward <laughs> on those weavy, mazy runs. That's probably what the Ferns need at this point in time because there's just no real direction in that attacking third, Kirsty. Yeah, CJ brings, you know, that, that grit as well to the game. You know, she's tough, she works really hard and she does have the engine to get up and down the pitch and, and is good in attack and can get good crosses in. And I think, you know, we've been lacking some quality around the crosses and play in the attacking third. So having her back and higher up the pitch would bring a lot of that. She has been the Ferns' best player basically every time she stepped down onto the field. She's been hampered by injury, so we haven't seen her anywhere near as much as we wanted to. But for me, she provides that physical dynamic threat up front and she provides that quality. We saw that recently against Argentina, I think it was, G. And if she has been the Ferns' best player every time she stepped down onto the field, then she needs to be played higher up the pitch to break up defences. Mm, and what about the important two, the duo in the middle of the park? Rhea Percival, Annalie Longo. Let's talk about Rhea first of all, because it's been a wee while since we've seen her. She's rehabbing from that knee injury. What qualities does she possess that will, will help turn the tide for the Ferns, Kirsty? Yeah, Rhea's a massive player for the Ferns and one that's they've really been missing, I think. You know, she, in the midfield there, she's got the ability to get on the ball and keep the ball and, and um, connect the play for the Ferns. And then, you know, in defence, she just works so hard and wins so much ball back for the Ferns. Brings a lot of confidence to the girls and, you know, and that experience and leadership from, from her playing days. On-field direction, really, really simple. She provides the leadership. And we've talked about that a lot and a number of these players um, are senior players, but she is what this team was built around in the early stages of Klimkova's reign. Mm. So she's the fulcrum, she moves play from side to side, and then a lot of the times she actually set the press. So she was the shepherd that sent um, the, the cavalry forward and said, we're gonna go and we're gonna shut this down now. So um, I think that she is the biggest missing piece out of all this at the moment. I know I've talked about Ursic and, and Bot, potentially the two best players, but I think everything's built around Percival. Is Anna Lee on the podium? Does she win bronze? Uh, if it's Ursig, <laughs> Percival, Longo, she, she's on the dais? I've been talking to some people recently, because to be honest, my Ferns history wasn't the best. Everyone has said to a, a man, because they're all men, um, that Anna Lee Longo is potentially <laughs> the, um, the generational talent um, in this Ferns team. She has dynamic, she has that wonderful touch, plays in tight spaces, and she wants the ball. She's, you could con continuously saying in this Wales game, give me the ball, I'm gonna open up the defence. So to have that confidence in a team that doesn't have any at the moment is really important. Yeah, I agree. I think um, Annalie is a player that wants to get on the ball and, and wants to make thing, things happen and, and play with the players around her as well. So, 
you know, she's good at linking play and, and getting other people in good opportunities and, and playing with them. So, yeah, we're missing a lot of creativity and she's one of those key players that brings that. And we haven't even touched on Liv Chance, obviously, um, question marks over here at the moment. But yeah. if you have CJ Bott, if you have Annalie Longo who ventures into that number 10 spot, it creates so much more space for Liv Chance to play as well because the defence is so spread. Um, I think two players that have pretty unlucky to miss out on this 11, a Jackie Hand, we haven't seen enough of her at the moment and we've perhaps got a bias towards Millie Clegg given her Phoenix um, play and the other one is Anna Lee, would love to see her in goal. I think Vic Essen wins it just on her recent performances. Before we move on, really quickly, has Hannah Wilkinson run her race? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think Wilkie actually showed, you know, a good game against Iceland and that header was a great goal that she scored. So I do still think she's she's an important player up top for the Ferns. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely players challenging that. And I think Jale had had really good games against Iceland and Nigeria. Uh, I don't think we saw enough of Clegg yet, so I'm not yeah. so sure if she is in that starting 11. I mean, ideally, if she can perform like she does for the Phoenix for the Ferns, then yeah, sure, why not? But I do think Hand actually did play really well and I think... I'd still like to see a bit more from her in that starting position as well. So I think I think it's kind of up for grabs, but I'm sure Yitka probably is still, you know, tipping the scales in favour of Wilkie. There's questions, not answers yet. Mm. Yeah. Well, Yitka's got 99 days to sort out everything. First, get on the plane and have a chat with Abby Ursig, and don't leave America until you've got her saying, yep, I'm in for the World Cup. Plenty of time, 99 days, as I say. But time is running out for the Wellington Phoenix men's side to secure a top four spot in the A-League men's competition. They went to Lamy Park. Would they come home with the chocolates on Easter weekend? Oh, as the break is on here, Zabata, the chance for an early goal. Here it comes. Now Zabata hits it near post, and again, Glover has called the one. Boss. Naboo. Little one two, beautifully done. Naboo still for McLaren. Lovely quick read. McLaren! The drought is over. Now, big ball for Zavada. Oh, who's brought that down brilliantly? Gee, he's got an argument there. The play out from the back. They managed to find somehow another one of those little pockets. Where Jan Sass is free to release Zavada. He looks up, crosses. Sass again brings it down. Now Ugarkovic deflected. And just three and a half minutes after the restart, it's a first Wellington Phoenix goal for Steven Ugarkovic, the man rumoured to be on his way to City. The boot. Tilio in the middle, McLaren back post. Oh, he's made it all the way through to McLaren! Wave after wave of City Blue attack at the moment. Naboo all the way across Tilio. Parishas looking there, Tilio! Oh, they're turning on the style now. Game on again. Lord is going to find himself in trouble here. It's red. Rafael back out. Galloway's touch for O'Neill. Berengay still. Jordi Boss across the face of goal. And Marco Tilio in the double. And it's turning into a round for Wellington Phoenix. Suffer the third consecutive defeat. And are inevitably being dragged down into that fight for finals football. 4 1 against Melbourne City. Not quite the result we were after. Time for the three nicks, our three picks for the Wellington Phoenix. First one, Jacob Spoonley. We're shooting blanks. We are, um, and you can't go to City and not score. We've seen teams that have picked up results um, at Amy Park against City basically outscore them. So Adelaide drew 3-3, they obviously scored three goals, and then they beat uh, City 4-2. Melbourne Victory also beat them 3-2. You cannot let chances like this go begging. Are we nothing without Zavada firing Kirsty? Yeah, I mean, he's obviously scored a lot of goals for the Phoenix this season, and without him, you know, being able to find the back of the net, that's who is stepping up at the moment. and. Yeah, I think that's been the problem, you know. No one has stepped up and put the ball in the back of the net. Point number two, it's got to be the defence. At times, Jacob Spoonley, it has been dire. What is going on back there? Yeah, we didn't have Scotty Wooten, 
but that should be no excuse. It's a massive hamstring at the moment. 11 goals in the last three games, and there's a really worrying pattern that's developing, which is that they concede around the 50 to 60 minute mark, which means that they've kind of run out of ideas, or they're getting overwhelmed by the opposition. So they've conceded six goals in that period over the last five games. Yeah, it's too easy, you know, like goals like that, just little tap-ins and, and playing in, in and around the box, too easy, too many passes, and, and someone needs to step up and win the ball back and, and clear it. Tell you what, it's got me worried about Eden Park on Sunday against Brisbane Raw. If Scotty Wooten doesn't recover from his injury and Josh Laws is out suspended, who do you play at centre-back soon? <laughs> I, look, I'm looking forward to seeing Finn Sermon make an appearance or Nico Boxer. We haven't really seen him so far this year, so give him his chance. Mm. Third point, third and final point, why is this not a penalty? Oscar Zavada gets cleaned up by Curtis Good and nobody says a word, Kirsty. Spoon's got his arms out. We'll get to you in a second. Kirsty, your thoughts, Spoon? <laughs> it's, it's a definite penalty for me. I have no idea why that wasn't called or why VAR didn't step in and, and change, you know, make, make it actually a penalty. It doesn't seem to be anyone really complaining that much other than Zavada. Mm. But... Yeah, I don't know. That's a definite penalty for me. Can we go back to Ufi's reaction? Because that basically summarised me. It's almost like you're waiting for it. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's a nailed-on penalty. And Ufi's standing there waiting for VAR, and VAR completes the review in, like, five seconds. I had no idea. I've never seen that before. A review that happens that quick on such a significant matter. Let me, let me put it this way. If this was roles reverse, and this is Jamie McLaren being taken out by Tim Payne, does City get a penalty? Absolutely. 100%. We've just heard yeah. Chloe 100%. whisper it. She's not even involved in the conversation. <laughs> Look at Ufi. He's just waiting. Um, it's a definite penalty. And yeah. if, we, if the Phoenix get this penalty, you know, it's one, one all. Yeah. And then we go 2-1 up early into the second half if the game continues as it had. So that changes the dynamic of the game massively. Mm. Kirsty, you've put in one hell of a shift today. Uh, <laughs> you were up at, what was it, 1am? Yeah. Did the you go to game? Bed? I mean, I went to bed for a couple of hours. I don't know how much Did sleep you I sleep got. here? <laughs> <laughs> I said I should have brought my sleeping bag and pillow. It would have been, it would have been much better. <laughs> oh, look, you've, you've done an outstanding job. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us on the Kiwi Football Fix. But we're going to sub you out now for, oh, for Chloe Not. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, Chloe, you're good. in. Well, you just stay put because <laughs> okay. it gets a little bit awkward when you walk out of the shot. <laughs> Yekka right. Klimkova did that okay. earlier in the season. That was amazing. Was weird. So you stay yes. put. <laughs> On the way there, let's talk about bromances. No, not mine and Jacob Spoon. <laughs> uh, which is probably one of the greatest bromances of all It time. could go on the rocks at the end of the show. I don't know what's coming. I don't know what's coming. <laughs> there is a classic bromance. Uh, it's happening. It's, it's in, unfolding before our very eyes at the Wellington Phoenix. Take a look at this. Thank you guys for taking the time to talk to us. So what should we do with this interview? What could be the best option? Espanol, más comfortable. Sí, podemos hablar un poco de español y portugués para que... Portuñol, sí. lo mezclamos. Sí. ¿Ok? Ok. ¿Cómo te has sentido en este tiempo que llevas acá en los Wellington Phoenix? La verdad es que de inicio entré muy bien. Me adapté muy bien de todo, de del país, del, del club, del sistema de jugar. Estoy jugando todo y me gusta y muy bien, todo muy bien. Para mí, no comienzo fue un poco complicado, muy eh, longe de casa, longe de mi familia, de mi hijo. Pero ahora creo que evolué bastante dentro, da, dentro del club y dentro de la competición. Creo que a gente viene haciendo un buen trabajo. ¿Tu familia está contigo ahora? Sí, mi familia está aquí ahora, mi esposa y mi hijo. Estão aqui. E é uma grande diferença. Muito. Acho que muda a energia, muda o dia a dia. Você chegar em casa e ver seu filho, ver sua família, é importante, algo importante. E em tu caso, estás solo aqui em Nova Em meu caso, sim, sí, estou solo, vivo solo. E este é. Solo não, ele vive comigo. Estamos sempre juntos, viemos para o treino juntos no mesmo sí. carro, nas viagens concentramos juntos e ficamos juntos no mesmo quarto. Como foi o começo de eh, tu participação com o Phoenix? Porque primeiro partido e que passou? Primeiro partido <risos> é, acabei sendo expulso, né? Eu escorreguei, na verdade acho que não foi é, para cartão vermelho, mas se o árbitro entendeu daquele jeito, ok, tranquilo. Tuviste que jugar en las, en las reservas, en el Phoenix Reserves. Sí. Eh, ¿Cómo fue esa experiencia? Esa experiencia fue muy tranquila. El entrenador preguntó para mí si yo quería participar del juego, si yo estaba tranquilo en, 
de jogar com a equipe reserva, eu falei que sim, que eu gostaria de jogar para ter ritmo de jogo. E foi muito bom, foi muito bom, fiz um bom jogo, pude fazer gol, é, ajudou para trazer confiança para a temporada e depois pude aplicar isso na, na E-League, na, na principal. Agora vêm os momentos decisivos do campeonato. Se sentem preparados para este desafio? Eu penso que sim. Sí. Foi uma temporada longa e encontramos nosso ritmo, encontramos nosso jogo. E, como has dicho, é o momento mais importante da temporada. Todos se sentem que podemos chegar nos playoffs e podemos fazer uma grande, uma grande temporada. Quem sabe chegar numa final seria importante para o clube também. Perfeito. Quero mostrar-te algo. A mim? Sim. Sí. O oh, oh. que é isso? <risos> um look diferente tinha em Portugal. Um lion? David Luiz. <risos> que pensa, Ian? What? <risos> uh, o que pensa? A mim, a mim me gostava. O que pensa? Não posso falar? O que pensa? Eu, de natureza, sou uma pessoa assim, de, não só com looks, também com muitas coisas, com roupa, com música. Me gusta experimentar. E tu harias algo assim? Não? <risos> Oh, nice work from our Spanish language department for the second time this season. Here we go. Uh, yeah, what a, what a romance that was, a bromance uh, between Kraev and Sars. Rodrigo was kind of getting in the mix a little bit as well. There's a lot of yeah. Spanish love going on yeah, there. Yeah, a bit of a three-way, do you yeah. think? Interesting, interesting <laughs> here on the Kiwi Football Fix. Tell you what, it's great to see Chloe Not Chloe, welcome back. Hey. It's been ages. Hey, How Good the hell are you? Why did you turn up in that? Because oh. we won. <laughs> what do you mean? It's my team. What a sad guy. <laughs> Chloe, um, let's talk about not bromances, but womances mm. in the Wellington oh, Phoenix women's nice. side. Uh, who doesn't have the same Who's thing. romantic? Oh, I think, like, I have to say, like, the trio of Paige, Mac, and um, Mackenzie Barry. Oh, no, they're the same person. Mackenzie Barry. And <laughs> <laughs> she thinks we're super into this. <laughs> <laughs> and Marisa, so Marisa, Mac and Paige, they all live together, so they're flooding together. And like, it's just the cutest, like, weirdest trio ever. They what do they get up to? Yeah. Um, I've witnessed some acapella. I've, they've actually invited me to be a part of it on one occasion, um, but they are just at another level. You like, politely declined. No, I did join in. Oh, you joined? I did join in, yeah. What? But... So, acapella, <laughs> what did you sing? <laughs> oh, all sorts. Like, you know, like, Pitch Perfect acapella, they'll put that on repeat, and Marisa will, like, really come in with, like, the musical instrument sounds and then... It's like a Disney movie. It's like High School Musical it's or something. It's brilliant. It's really, really good. So what yeah. you're really telling us, Chloe, is that you're part of this romantic foursome now. No, no, I just got one appearance. I'm not, like, cameo. quite at that level. Yeah, cameo appearance. Not quite at that level. Shall we talk about the Wellington Phoenix second season in yeah. the A-League women's competition? Let's move away from any kind of bromantic, romantic <laughs> chat. Uh, do you view season number two as a positive experience, slightly negative experience, given that you did finish 11th and last? Yeah, like, I, yeah, I'm pretty disappointed with, like, finishing last. I feel like I had, like, going into the season, I feel like there was so much potential there for us to do better and then... We started really slow and then like you kind of could see glimpses and then by the time we started playing like it was just kind of too late, you know, we'd already been, yeah, bottom of the league and couldn't score. So yeah, disappointing. I think we could have we didn't really meet our potential. So yeah. What were some of the highlights then? Because you've talked about how the disappointment, but you obviously achieved some wonderful things throughout the season as well. Yeah, like I think like towards the middle of the season, like it really felt like we were playing good football, like some of the games you'd come off the field, like even when we were losing on like drawn, like I was like, okay, we're actually playing good football here. Like the chances are gonna come. We weren't scoring, but it felt good to like kick the ball around and like actually play through lines. Um, and then obviously the five nil win was just like incredible. Like such a good feeling to like win in that way um, after so long of like not being there for yeah, you. that that five nil win against Canberra, it did appear to sort of kickstart the back end of the season because it was something like three wins, three draws from your last ten, wasn't yeah. it? So, you know, that that in itself, that little period there, that's got to be a real positive moving forward. Yeah, yeah, it was it was great, and I think like yeah, it was like right after Christmas, we kind of just everything started to click, and we were like finding good connections in midfield and like going forward, and then again, I think it was just the goals that were lacking, but. 
we, we knew we could do it because we scored five in one game. So it was just like, how do we do that more? Rave about yourself if you can. <laughs> uh, look, as, as New Zealanders, we really struggle to pump up our own tyres, but your own performance through season two, what did you think of it? Um, I like... I'm like not happy with my performances, you know, like I don't, I feel like I could have given more, but like I feel like that a lot. Um, I think I like definitely started slow again with the team, but then like towards the middle, I felt like I kind of got into my groove a little bit and um, I was getting on the ball a lot more, which was great. I love being on the ball. Um, yeah, I got a goal, which was okay. In, in terms, well, great point. And so in terms of tangibles, mm -hmm. are you looking to have more assists and score more goals? Because you do play an attacking midfield role for the team. Yeah, I think I was played more as a six, like, towards the end. Like, I was more of a holder and, like, kind of connecting play. So it's hard to have tangibles, you know, like recoveries or, like, you know, but... Um, they don't have you go down the stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess just how many times I can break up play, but there's no, yeah, stats for that. Um, I would love to get more assists. Like I think, I think for me, an assist is sweeter than a goal sometimes. So um, that what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. So if you want assists, have a chat to Mickey Foster. I and know. Get her to like dish a, a few out. <laughs> she uh, can maybe like pass the ball to me. I'll head it back. She, yeah. Something. <laughs> we, like that. we spoke about her earlier. You know, like the. The, the curve that she's on, she's come in, Wellington Phoenix professional, all of a sudden she's, she's almost nailed on in that left back position for the mm. football ferns. What have you made of her ascension? Oh, she's just been brilliant. Like she's always been a quality player and I think like now she's in the environments where she can show it. Like um, playing for Phoenix, she just slotted in straight away. Like in pre-season she was just ma made to be there and she was definitely at the level like, a, you know, one of the best players on the team and then now she's showing the same at Ferns, like she's hanging in with the best players. So, yeah, so cool for her. I'm really happy for her. So what happens from here? Because at the moment, we've got you and Alyssa Wynnum confirmed for <laughs> season three and nobody else. Yeah. We don't have a coach, we don't have a, a squad. And there's so much time as well between the end of one season and the beginning of the other. So what, what happens? Yeah, I think we're lucky that like a lot of the bulk of the team are in the Ferns. So i like training with the Ferns. So everyone will be in that environment together. It's obviously not great that it's not with the Phoenix team, but they'll still be working together, building connections and like still playing football. I think Betsy's going to Iceland, so she's like in season. Um, but yeah, hopefully the fun stuff will just like bleed into Phoenix starting. Well, if you're um, looking for something to do, you could play domestic football, much like what Seamus Martin is doing. Oh, he's not playing. Goodness gracious me. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Show. Watching Seamus play. Jeez, <laughs> uh, I'd love to see it, actually. Uh, Seamus, he is uh, obviously closely linked to Melville United. They opened up their doors at Gower Park for Hamilton Wanderers. Yes, it is the Riverdance Derby. Melville have the lead. Now Jones. Good work from Mark Jones. And no doubt about that one. Swung one in in the first half from this position. Oh my goodness, you cannot believe that. That's gone in again. Good play from Brinkman. Here's Taiku. Lidico got on the road. Here's Jordan Lamb. Deflecting to Taiku again. Great ball. And there's an equaliser. Lovely play. Let's see what Pratt, the goal scorer, can do from this corner. Some tall lads in that Melbourne team, but it's still here for Hamilton Wanderers. Flipped on by Nottage. It's another goal, and Derek Taiku gives the team the blue to lead. That's a lovely touch to Brinkman. Crack here, here's Lamb. Penalty is given. And he's done so. And it's Derek Taiku. Still time for Melville. Oh, brilliant stop there by Barnaby. So Hamilton Wanderers are going to get the win. That is full time. Absolute bludger of a weekend for Seamus Martins Melville, losing 4-2 in the Riverdance Derby. And then come, what was it, Good Monday? Good Monday? Easter Monday. I forget if it's Easter Friday and Good Friday and all that sort of stuff. 5-0, Manorewa.
Lots of Easter eggs given out by Marvel. How good's that graphic, though? Yeah. That has yeah. to be used That's going sick. forward. Yeah. That's like National League marketing material. You want it to replace your goal, don't yes. you? Yes. <laughs> That's exactly right. It ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. Hey, um, what's happening around the world with Kiwis and stuff? Well, a lot's over the weekend. We've had goals and assists. So if we head to Ireland first and foremost, Max Mata... Take us there. ...has scored again six goals in eight games. Oh and his hold-up play is getting much better. He's created 13 chances as well. But he is having an absolute ripper. Uh, so that was on the way to a 2-1 win against Dundalk. Unfortunately, on Good Monday, as you put it... Good Monday, Easter... Friday? Sligo did lose to Shelburne, so they went from third down to six. But if we head across to the Netherlands, we have Maddie G. Matt Garbert delivering on the dangerous <laughs> promise. Shh. Is he still rocking this the This is mo? my section. Driving out of midfield, <laughs> mate. That hunger and determination, that oh, physical okay, ability that was on display is now paying dividends for Nick Brader. In the eight games that he has played, he has come up with four assists and scored his first goal on the weekend. At 20 years of age, still so, so good. Let's stay in the Netherlands. Unfortunately, Ryan Thomas lost, but so did Heracles, so Pex Valle are still in the box seat for promotion. But if we move down to Plymouth Argyle. He didn't score, did he? Ben Wayne, although we might have to retire that after what's about to come. Uh, he scores Don't his first it. league goal for Plymouth Argyle in front of his mum and dad, no less. So they made the long Fantastic. trip from New Zealand Wayne to Plymouth train. Argyle. Wayne Train makes its first stop in the station. A 3-1 win icing on the cake yeah. from which, Ben Wayne. Which led this individual to pose Jesus the following question. I'm really, really sorry about this. Train. How you boarded the Wayne train? I love How it. How you boarded the Wayne <laughs> train? Do you like this? How yeah. You the We're going to that. Train. Have you he makes me want to get off the train. He looks a bit like you. Oh, stop it. Yeah, it's actually me. That was me. <laughs> so was you like that accident. abomination. <laughs> He's wearing a Liverpool shirt. That's something you would do. <laughs> yeah, why is he a Liverpool <laughs> shirt? That's not fair. Our season's been horrific. We don't need that as well. It's <laughs> shocking, eh? Uh, Chloe, big big man in the EPL, none bigger than Erling Haaland. Uh, 30 goals from 27 appearances. His second against Southampton, the uh, overhead bicycle kick. Is there anything this guy can't do? It was brilliant. Like, the ball could be anywhere and he'll just find it and put it in the goal. Um, so that's brilliant, but my Kiwis around the world wasn't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, all, it's all about sharing the love, mate. Can it you can't do this? all be about you. It's all about right. Haaland, though. That's Jesus, right. the machine is at it again. Yeah. They really yeah. uh, they got out the good oil for the robot this time. Yeah. And look at this, Wooshka! Grealish has ball in. Yeah, Grealish has really come into his own lately, yeah. hasn't he, Chloe? He has. I don't like you womancing Man City when you've got a Manchester United. I'm allowed shooter. to appreciate this, but I will always be true to Man United. The oh, real okay. treat, the real treat, was when Erling got his hair out at half time. Are we going to see it? Because. It is majestic. He oh, takes wow. off the, the headband and oh, wow. it's a Timothée commercial. Maybelline. Maybelline. Yeah, I don't what know do Timothée. I'm going to go Maybelline. Maybelline. Isn't that makeup? Is it? I'm you not... idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Me? <laughs> Maybelline. Chloe said it. Oh, did you say it? <laughs> I'm not like a proper girl. Like, I don't know that stuff. What's Come the on. hair one? Good luck with your HR complaint. VO5. Uh... VO5. <laughs> well, you're my lawyer. <laughs> so I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah, but is he gonna is he gonna break the record for all time scoring? Oh mate, he, he's probably gonna surpass Andy Cole and Aaron Shearer. I don't know what theirs is. Is it thirty two goals in a Premier League season? Thirty four goals 34. in a forty two match season. Unreal. He's going towards the likes of uh, Dixie Dean was a name that was thrown around nineteen twenty seven to twenty eight season. Yeah, so, so ninety five years ago. Yeah, sixty goals. Years ago. Um, sixty yeah. goals. But I reckon he's gonna hit the forty mark. Yeah, I reckon he's unbelievable. He's unstoppable. There's mm. nothing you can do. What about some red cards that were happening on the sidelines as well? Tottenham and uh, Brighton, things got heated. Look at the state of this. You'll see Stellini has just stood there like a statue, <laughs> staying out of it. And he gets a red card, Chloe. How's he getting the red? He gets a red. Why? And so does um, De Zerbi. But, but look at him, he's like, what? Look at him. Are you serious? <laughs> he was he's, he's he was the stood there doing nothing. Do you know why he got a red card? <laughs> no. For failing to control this technical area. That's a bit unfair. That, I feel like that's not fair. De Zerbi, mate, he, he is absolutely instigated that whole situation. He just stands there, hands in pockets, real innocent, yeah. like, oh, what's He got a red card in fair. Yeah. 
Well, two months ago, so he's got form, but poor old Stellini just stood there doing nothing. <laughs> That's so unfair. <laughs> <laughs> who, who else was stood there doing nothing at the weekend for Northern <laughs> Rovers? Was it Jacob Spoonley on the bench receiving <laughs> a yellow card? It might have been, but I think you're missing the point here with Fabianski. He's the one that's going to... Oh, going so to... you don't want to talk about... No, 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 <laughs> no. I know what's coming. But um, look, at, look at the reaction here. The celebration from Isak is exactly the same as the commiseration shown by Fabianski. Uh -oh. You're deflecting, Double teapot. Mate. You're deflecting. Double teapot. Nobody wants to know about the celebration. We just want to see this guy charge out of his penalty area, a la Jacob Spoonley. Listen, we've seen this week after week after week. Jacob Spoonley <laughs> coming out of oh his gosh, area yeah. against Hawke's Bay United <laughs> when he was playing for Auckland City. He's I mean, great. what? Yeah, it, it doesn't <laughs> doesn't get any better, does Don't it? Don't you stoke the fire? <laughs> yeah, so happy. Get You've seen one, this before. Get a close up of Chloe. You've seen this yes, before. I've seen it. Oh, you're not no, talking about it. You're asking Chloe. Before. You're rolling around on the floor. <laughs> And he gets berated by the coach. We've all seen it before, right? It's not even my coach. A man by the name, so a man by the name of Dean Bartle. He he goes by the the handle Monk FC on Instagram. He does these really cool things, little plaques. He does it all on his own. Uh, he's he's memorialised no. the Jacob Spoonley muck up incredibly against crazy. Hawks Bay, and this is being presented to Jacob Spoonley oh. right now. Oh, Can we get a close Jesus up of this, Christ. please? This is what has happened. Don't clap. It basically illustrates... Don't clap. It illustrates Jacob Spoonley oh, it's leaping beautiful. out a goal and the ball flying past him. So on behalf of it. Dean Bartle, Monk FC, mm. and the Wellington Phoenix and all of the Kiwi Football Fits faithful, congratulations, Jacob Spoonley, on your wonderful achievement. You can remember it forever now. You can yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah, cool. Put it on your wall. So thank you, Monk FC, and uh, absolutely no thanks to you, Chloe, or you. Unbelievable. These, look, busy behaviour from you. He's even got the date it happened and the goal scorer. Oh, my it's God. Fantastic. Actually, the detail here is... The detail here that you might not be able to see is there's a goalkeeper right in there. And he's rolling around on the ground as well. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. He's Jacob Spoonley. <laughs> oh. uh, so and on that bombshell, my thanks to Jacob Spoonley. <laughs> <laughs> and my thanks to Chloe Not So good to see you again, Chloe. Yeah. Hopefully we can uh, do it again if your study allows it. Yeah, maybe. Get some assignments done first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't wait till the last <laughs> night before it's due. Okay? Yeah. Just don't do it over, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> he doesn't know what an exam or an assignment is, but... Mate, I haven't done an exam since I was, like, 17. You don't know what Maybelline is, mate. I know what it is. It's makeup. <laughs> it's makeup, isn't it? No, I think so, yeah. I yeah, think you might look, be right. We'll continue Maybe this discussion we... a little bit later. Maybe once we're off air. Thanks so much for watching. If you're still with us, <laughs> we go out tonight <laughs> with the very best goals from the English Premier League, and we hope to see you next time on the Kiwi Football Fix. <laughs> Prudence, looking for Diego Costa, came away off Kulibaly. Oh, that's magnificent. Matthias Nunes volleying Wolves in front. Arita Balaga given no chance. Wilson. Wilson is open up. That is a finish from a terrific player. And they have turned this one around, the Toonami. Sends in the cross. Are you with the header? The man brought in to replace the injured Will Saha. Scores just his second goal of the season. Harisic into Son. Son goes to goal! Oh, what a strike! And what a way to score your 100th Premier League goal! Son Heung-min with the opener for Tottenham, and in some style too.